Dude, have you heard that people have been making bank from reselling Taylor Swift tickets? Really? How much? Like, thousands. No way, I have T-Swift tickets. Should I sell them? Uh, it depends. What kind of tickets do you have? Front row, duh. Dude, sell them. You'll be able to go on a, on like a luxury cruise to Europe or something. Let's talk about this after the intro. Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Real Deal, Ball State's premier entertainment news show. I'm your host, Josh. And I'm Colin. So Europe, you say? Yeah. Uh, you may get like 10,000 or, you know, something huge, I don't know. You know what? Screw it. I'll sell them then. That's my boy. E. Next segment while I figure this out. Hey now, this is Sean here with my very first album review. Today we're going to take a look at Blow Your Mind by Girl Apocalypse. Now, let me just start this off by saying that I was not prepared for this album. Gorilla Apocalypse features singer-songwriter IZMB collaborating with producer Grizz LaFlair and lyricist Gary G.B. Bernard. That creates a tornado of vibes. Blow Your Mind was a complete surprise to me when I initially picked this project out. I was expecting 30 minutes of the most hardcore punk I was ever going to hear in my life due to the aggressive aesthetic of the project. And also because I picked it because I love punk and the pictures of the gorilla with a gun to his head was really interesting to me. Well, the album ended up being the complete opposite of that. Um, instead of hardcore punk, I was greeted with these beautiful string arrangements as well as lyrics filled with love. The strings that can be heard on tracks like Chemistry or Different in an Instant immediately make, made me think of French Exit by TV Girl. The string arrangements on, on the album are also fantastic, and that is why I feel like this album drew a lot of influence from TV Girl. However, my main gripe with this is that I wish the album had more of an idea of what it was. I think that the name Gorilla Apocalypse alone will just throw about anyone off, but the album art as well sparks a lot of contrast between the violent aesthetic and the heartfelt lyrics that can be heard in each song. The project as a whole was very ironic and fun, but I think if they want to make their music more digestible for the average person, they will have to find a way to develop a recognizable identity. I think there's a lot of love here. I give it a 7 out of 10. So, uh, how much are you selling for? I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I'd say maybe 14000 a pop. For real? Yeah, son. Someone will buy. I swear. Okay. Here I go and sell. We're going to be rich. We? I mean, you. You're gonna be rich. Yeah. But, uh, do you know the deets about, like, the whole Ticketmaster thing lately? No. Ooh. Uh, I'll explain after this next segment. It's a long story. Hey guys, I'm Neely, coming at you this week to discuss the 65th annual Grammys for 2023. It was an interesting one, that's for sure, but it was a big win for the love of my life, Harry Styles, winning Album of the Year for his third studio album, Harry's House, which includes hit singles, As It Was, and Late Night Talking, which helped him also win for Best Pop Vocal Album and Best Engineered Album as well. This caused an uproar in the online community, but I'm more than happy to have my king on top. In regards to Queens, though, Beyonce had another groundbreaking night as well, going on to become the person with the most Grammys of all time, also winning Best R&B Song for Cuff It, Best Dance Recording for Break My Soul, and Best Electronic Album for Renaissance. Other Queens include Lizzo earning Record of the Year for About Damn Time and Adele for Best Pop Solo Performance for Easy On Me. Now it's about damn time we talk about Miss Taylor Swift. I mean, it's the real deal. We always talk about Taylor here. Swift won Best Music Video for her short film, All Too Well. Taylor's close friend and producer, Jack Antonoff, won Best Producer. Best Latin Rock or Alternative Album went to My Girl, Rosalia, for her album, Moto Mami, including viral hit, Bizcochito. The Grammys are always filled with stunning looks and drama, like the major shock that was Song of the Year. Thanks for having me, and let's see what albums are released this year that will be nominated for next year's Grammys. No way! Yeah, we want to uh, destroy the whole Ticketmaster hierarchy. What does that mean for my tickets? Uh, they better sell fast. I mean, I guess we'll see.
By the way, how's that girl going for you? Still in the works, no updates. Okay. Oh my gosh, I just got a Ticketmaster notification. What is it? It says Taylor Swift tickets will drop in value in the next one minute. Uh, you better hope, uh, better hope they sell during this next segment. Hey guys, uh, this week I don't really have that much to talk about, so I thought it would be fun to recommend five movies that I really enjoy. I will try and suggest some films that people have not seen, and after talking a bit about them, I will let you know what streaming service the film is on. Let's get started with the first film, The Nice Guys. The Nice Guys was directed by Shane Black and stars Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe as two detectives that try to solve, quote unquote, the crime of the century. This film is one of my favorite buddy comedies that I have watched at least once a year since I first discovered it in 2018. It has some great writing and hilarious performances from both Ryan and Russell. This film has so many laugh out loud moments that still get a chuckle out of me even though I have seen this film countless times. If you want to check it out, this film is streaming on Netflix. The next film I want to talk about is the action thriller titled Collateral. The film was directed by Michael Mann and stars Jimmy Fox and Tom Cruise. The film follows a cab driver played by Jamie as an assassin played by Tom enters his cab and forces him to drive around the city for a night of carnage. I went to this film completely blind and I was surprised at how scary Tom Cruise's character was in this film. I'm so used to seeing him in the role of a good guy doing crazy stunts, it never occurred to me that if this guy was on a different side morally, he would be horrifying. The film does a great job at keeping you on the edge until the credits roll. If this film sounds up your alley, it is streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Next up is Francis Ha. This film was directed by Noah Baumbach and stars the director of both Lady Bird and the recent remake of Low Women, Greta Gerwig, as Francis. The film follows her as she struggles with finding out what she wants to do in her mid-twenties. The character of Francis is immediately likable and relatable in some ways. A lot of the scenes in this film feel so real when she is interacting with friends and family. It is one of those films that reminds me that it is okay to be a bit lost in your 20s. It is all about finding what sticks. And for the Star Wars fans out there, Adam Driver appears in this film and is in a supporting role, and he is great in this. It is a little film that I really love. Francis Ha is now streaming on Netflix. Up next is The Lost Boys, directed by Joel Schumacher. Shortly after moving to a small town in California, two brothers realize that at night th they are being stalked by a group of vampires. I am not going to go into too much detail of this movie if you haven't seen it, but this is a great 80s classic with some comedy, heart, and a surprising amount of gore. It is a film that I really love revisiting, and I recommend you watch this classic, especially because very soon Hollywood is going to be remaking it. Yay! It is not streaming on any service at the moment, but since the film is owned by Warner Brothers, my best bet is that it will be on st streaming on HBO very soon. The last film I want to recommend is The Elephant Man, directed by David Lynch and stars Anthony Hopkins and John Hurt. The film is based on the true story behind John Merrick, aka The Elephant Man. David Lynch films can be daunting to some people due to how much he adds the element of surrealism in his stories, but for viewers that just want a basic story, this film is not only very welcoming to people that aren't aware of his work, it is one of his most heartfelt films. The cinematography of this film stood out to me in so many places, and Anthony Hopkins and John Hurt knock it out of the park. I do love Lynch's more crazy works like Eraserhead and Lost Highway, but I still have a lot of love for this film. The Elephant Man is now streaming on Paramount Plus and Showtime. If you end up checking these films out, I hope you enjoy them. That's all for me. I hope you're doing well. See ya. OMG, the tickets, they sold. Oh no, it wasn't time. Uh, how much? Six. Cool, six what? Just six, six dollars? Oh. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's not that bad. I bought them for 500 each. Oh God, oh, oh, oh man. I'm the world is evil, I'm cruel sorry. even. It'll be okay, they're there. Don't touch me, this is a vulnerable moment. Sorry. Can we just go to the final words, please? Let's move past this. Nope. Hey, call Marth, uh, alongside you once again. This is the most real, deal that has ever been dealt. Um, I tell you what, uh, hey, I'm here to talk to you about the rock wall here at Ball State, because oh my god, is it like the most fun thing ever. Never did I think that I would ever want to go rock climbing, 
but I caved. I went uh, on Tuesday. I climbed that rock wall. Man, it was fun. And I went again today before uh, filming. Uh, it was super cool. Somebody just yelled out there. Uh, but hey, man, super fun, super cool. Go check out the uh, rock climbing wall. There's a rock climbing club or something. They meet on Wednesdays at like 8, I think. Uh, I don't know. I'm not part of it or a sponsor, so don't take my word for it. Uh, but definitely go rock climbing because it's cool. Last night, I had a show with my band Seventh Cloud Society in Chicago. Super cool, super awesome. We played with a band called Western Bisexual and another band called Minivan. Uh, we played at a venue called The Book Club and we found out today that we broke the record for most tickets sold in a night, which is super cool. Uh, I'm exhausted, got back to Fort Wayne at 3.30 in the morning, uh, left there at I think nine o'clock this morning, got here and immediately went to class. So I'm ready to just fall over and die. Uh, you may never see me again after today, uh, but you know what? It was all worth it in the end. Uh, the show will be on YouTube somewhere probably. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna hand it off to Josh because I'm so tired, but I love you, you're beautiful. Uh, I'm forgetting everything that happened in our past because I'm not one to hold grudges. I like to move on and move forward. You broke my heart and I kind of hate you still, but I also love you. I think you're beautiful. Have a wonderful day that this episode airs. Endless bangers are what Miley Cyrus releases, and her recent is Flowers, released on January 13th, which is the lead single for her upcoming album, Endless Summer Vacation, which is the follow-up to her previous album, Plastic Hearts, which was extremely underrated. But now she's topping the charts, and Flowers earned a number one and is going viral on TikTok. I can't wait to hear the full album and hope it is a summer smash. New year, new Miley. As always, thank you for watching. If you want to see anything else from us here at The Real Deal, be sure to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and our website for all things entertainment. I'm Josh Pavlovsky. And I'm Colin Marth. Thanks for watching.